What's up everyone, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and today we're taking a look at a product from SOG. This is the SOG Snarl. This is a Jason Browse collaboration project. So essentially what they did is SOG and Jason Browse connected and uh, Jason Browse had designed the Silent Soldier and so this is SOG's version of the Silent Soldier. There are some differences between the two different knives. Uh, the main difference uh, that you're going to find is the type of steel that's used and also the price point. This is a, a a production model so a lot of these have been made as opposed to Browse is kind of in the category of like uh, making unique knives, you know, designing them and then doing just a small run or kind of a medium sized run as far as the amount of production. The SOG Snarl is obviously going to be something that they're going to produce a lot of in a factory, uh, likely overseas and then bring it over here and sell it for a lower price point. So the main advantage of the Snarl right off the bat is that you're going to pay probably around $50 give or take. So it's going to be less than a Jason Browse design if you're getting it directly from him. Let's talk through some of the specs. Your blade length is 2.3 inches. Your overall length 4.3 inches. The weight is 1.9 ounces. Your blade steel is 9CR18 MOV and your Rockwell hardness rating is 58 to 60. It is a sheep foot blade design and it does come with a molded nylon sheath and a neck chain that is a breakaway neck chain. Here's what it looks like when it's in the sheath and a couple of the things that are worth noting about the sheath, you have these two bolts here and you can take them out. Obviously you got these two grommet holes over here. Uh, there is a clip on the back and so you can wear this on a belt. When you are wearing it on a belt like this, obviously you have the um, knife running horizontally as opposed to vertically. It doesn't seem like you're going to be able to take these out and spin them around in any, any other setup. You probably could swap out a bolt and then put one here and then one here and run it vertically, but you're kind of jerry-rigging it if you're doing that. Uh, the other thing worth noting is that uh, when you run the chain, you're going to have to take this bolt out, this bolt out, take the clip off, and then run your chain through here and here if you want it to run vertically on your neck. You could certainly put the chain through here and here, but it's a little awkward as far as how it's going to actually rest, you know, on your chest as you're as you're carrying it. So, I would have liked to see, you know, have to have seen another um another hole here. I don't know if their idea is that you're going to run it through one hole, maybe this one or this one. This one looks like it's not going to even the uh, chain wouldn't even fit, but uh, in general, another hole here, you know, maybe move this down a little bit and put another hole here. That would have helped the setup a lot. But uh, again, still the fact for me is if I was going to run it, I would run it on my belt. So this, this setup as it is uh, works just fine. But just want to let you know about that as far as setting it up with the chain. Now when it comes to actually holding the knife, I found it's quite ergonomic and you can you can set it up in a bunch of different ways when you grab a hold of it. This feels like a very comfortable position, so first finger and middle finger, and then your thumb goes right on the jimping, which is on top here. Uh, so that's one way to do it. You do have this groove here, so you could actually run it like this, which will put your thumb a little bit further forward, and so that feels comfortable as well. Obviously it depends on how you're using the knife or what you're using it for. Other than that, I mean, you know, you can just get your, uh, the basically the, the just below the knuckle uh, if you want to run it like this and then with just the two fingers, nothing down in there. You know, after that, you're probably not going to be running it with your ring finger. That just feels, it could work, feels a little bit awkward and certainly you're not going to be running your pinky. That's just goofy there. So, you know, generally this is going to be your main setup or like so. Something else I wanted to note about the sheath, it feels like there's some sort of rubberized uh, texture in there. So that when you actually slide the blade in, it feels like you're sliding against this, you know, this nylon here, and then all of a sudden it feels like you're hitting something that's rubberized. It doesn't make a huge, you know, difference as, as far as like it's not uncomfortable, it doesn't cause any issues, but it does feel like as you're actually putting it in the in the sheath, it, it rubs up against something that slows the process of the knife going in a little bit. Uh, once it's in, retention is good. Apparently the first prototypes of this, there was some uh, movement, so maybe they did put that rubberized texture inside. Um, as far as it locking into place, there's no real, no real click per se um, when I put it in. It does seem to, you know, get to the end point and, and to be secure, but it does not kind of click into place. There's no tab or something that's keeping, keeping it locked in. And once you actually have the knife inside the sheath and you want to take it out, I found it does come out quite easily. No issues as you're actually deploying the blade. Here's what the chain looks like that's included with the Snarl. I did want to tell you that I tried the smaller end, actually put it through that tiny little hole, and it doesn't fit. So you are going to have to remove the uh, belt clip here so that you can run 
the uh, chain through here and here or again if you want to do it a little bit awkward in my opinion but you could run the chain through there and there and then it's going to sit a little bit strangely on your uh, on your chest when it's around your neck but hey that's your choice I'm standing here in my studio now. I got a sweatshirt on. Obviously you can't really see anything. Nothing stands out as far as the knife. But when I do lift this up, you can see here it is on my belt and easy enough to draw the knife out of the sheath. I will note that the size of the clip and this width basically between the sheath and uh, the inside of the metal portion of the clip, it's pretty wide. So if I just put it on this normal belt, it moves a lot so I basically put it over the belt and also over the top of my pants and that keeps it a bit more secure so you may want to fiddle with that as far as you know compressing those two uh, those two sections together so it's a little bit more snug right now it'll still move so that's not fantastic but I'm sure if I crank that down a little bit I may have to use a vice grip to get that to come together a little bit it'll be just fine when it comes to running this as a neck knife with the included chain, let me show you the first setup, which is without removing the belt clip and just using the in two included holes as is. So here's how that looks. You can see it's at about a 45 degree cant there. It is still easy to take the knife out of the sheath for deployment, um, but it, it is a little bit odd as far as how it how it rests. Doesn't feel you know terrible. It doesn't feel really awkward. Um, but again, since most neck knives run vertical, it is a little strange to have it running at this 45 degree cant. Option number two for running it around your neck would look like this. You can see I've taken off the belt clip, and so I've put the chain through one of the holes that one of the belt clip bolts was in before, and then the other hole was already open. And this is easy to get the knife out of the sheath, and then placing it easy enough to do. And once again, you can see that you don't see anything. There's no printing or anything like that. Now, something I want to note is that when you first look at the belt clip and these holes here, it looks like these would line up, looks like these would line up, these would line up. Actually, the only place that the belt clip will fit is when you line these up with these two holes like so. And you have to have it uh, with this little notch you can see right there in the hole that's up here. So this actually... No way, no matter how you try to run it, you know, underneath, like this, this. There's no different way to set up. There's only one way to set up the belt clip with this knife. I think if they just align these properly and took this little extra hook off here that you can see right there, then you would have a bunch of different options for how you want to set it up. So you could run it vertically, horizontally, you know, for somebody right-handed, left-handed, whatever the case is for you as the person who's going to deploy it. That would have been a nice setup, but as it is now, there's only one way you can actually run this with the belt clip. Let's wrap up now talking about the SOG Snarl. The two downsides I would say, the first one is the sheath setup, I just mentioned that, but if they had thought that through a little bit more and given you more options for how you could run it and set it up, rig it on your belt, around your neck, that would have made me happy. Uh, it's not a total make or break thing for me, but um, that's something in a maybe an, another version of this they could make some changes there. The other thing is that compared to the Browse version, the seal that they use for this is not as nice. Uh, SOG made a conscious choice to do that, I'm assuming, because they want to keep it around $50, give or take. So, you know, you're going to pay more for uh, a higher-end steel, but you're going to pay more for a higher-end steel. So you got to make the, uh, the cost-benefit analysis when it comes to uh, the type of steel that you're using for a knife. On the positive side, I would say I like the additional jimping that they put on this compared to the Browse version. It's very ergonomic, it's easy to deploy, it's easy to put back into the sheath, and uh, it's got a nice solid, um, I won't say lock-in because it doesn't actually click into place, but when it's in the sheath, it feels like it's very solidly retained. It's not going to fall out or it's not moving around at all, so that's a major plus. There you have it, we've been looking at the SOG Snarl. I like this knife, I like the fact that they work with Browse on this, and um, I would say, you know, for the price range, this is probably something that's going to fall in the good to slightly higher than good category for what you're paying when you're looking for a neck knife or a small knife like this that you could put on your belt. If you've got one of these or you've got one of Jason Browse's knife that this is based off of, which is the Silent Soldier, why don't you leave a comment down below, let us know what you think about either one of the blades, and give some feedback. Thanks as always for checking out our videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids on YouTube if you have not done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram and Tumblr as well. Take care.